All right, guys, let's hop into it. One of the best barbarian builds to come out in season four of Diablo 4 is going to be the Dust Devil Barbarian. Now, there are a few different ways to play it. This one is going to be highlighting the dual blade one which is the double swing however you can get away with also playing war one which is going to be a completely different build and i will be also dropping a build guide for that one but pretty much the flavor of the month for the barbarian seems to be these dust devils they are the main source of damage however double swing can actually deal a good amount of damage as well there's also a brand new pair of unique gloves called twin strikes which can give you ranks to double swing as well as giving you this special unique ability to make it so after casting double swing you're going to be able to have additional double swings after a set amount that deals some sort of bonus damage now unfortunately these gloves do not roll with crit which is a huge part of gloves being good in Diablo 4. And on top of that, you will not be able to add more tempering to the item because, well, they are some uniques. So they don't really need to be in the build at all, but if you do want to run them, that is essentially what's going to be new for gear. Now, you can temper on a lot of mods, and I'm just going to go ahead and let you guys know in the gameplay here, I do not have increased tornado size um, as far as the tempering goes, nor do I have the uh, chance for more tornadoes. The reason why I wanted to deliver the gameplay without those tempers is, at the moment, I think that there's a high chance that this is going to be what the gameplay will look like. Because if you spawn in too many tornadoes, the game will actually lag. So for the sake of being realistic, this is probably going to be what the build looks like. Because if you have all these giant tornadoes, you literally cannot see the screen. And that does become a problem. Also, your computer will start to lag, which is obviously a bad thing. So they will probably nerf the tornado size that you can get, as well as the amount that you can generate. So I didn't put those on in the gameplay. And in the gameplay, no uber uniques. Heck, I didn't even run any uniques. But there are some uniques, like... Uh, the opus that you can throw on uh and of course if you happen to have grandfather or the harlequin crest the shaco this will all make the build better i put some notes here but this is going to be a more realistic build for i would say 90 percent of the players interested in playing so just so we get that out of the way uh let's go ahead and get started with the gameplay as well as go over the build and how it plays so the first skill is actually completely optional i'm running iron skin but throw whatever you want you can run leap you can run charge just any other skill is totally fine uh, double swing is going to be our main source of activating our damage even though double swing does do way more damage than our whirlwind if we wanted to play the whirlwind build the main damage is still from the dust devils that essentially spawn in then just like every single barbarian build this is going to be no different triple shouts wrath of berserker so ideally you can kind of rotate in between your shouts and that's because uh vocalized empowerment will just give you extra source of regen but regen should be much easier to upkeep in the next season you don't even have to run a basic skill to kind of activate in between even earlier on in the game uh now with resource being able to be uh put on in terms of an affix on your helm your chest piece as well as boots it's really easy to upkeep but try to rotate in between these or if you want a boss you can just activate all of them and uh, all the tornadoes that spawn in because when you shout tornadoes will spawn in just delete the boss instantly and then wrath of berserker obviously for bosses but you can activate it whenever you really need it so as far as the build goes uh you pretty much just activate double swing you just cast your buffs i mean every single other skill is a buff and then for the technique, I like personally to run the two-handed sword one for consistency of getting berserking with one of the Paragon legendary nodes. It really does help out because you're going to be able to grant yourself berserking when you kill a bleeding enemy. So this is how we apply the bleed. If you want to, you can run the axe. That is going to give you more damage, but it's going to be less uptime on berserking, which kind of affects the consistency of the character. So it's up to you what you want to run over there, but uh, you can also run an aspect to get like extra bleed while berserking. And there's a lot of things that you can do with bleed. You can also, if you wanted to run another skill, you can also apply thorns and then have thorns apply the bleed. There's lots of different ways, but I think this is just super fast and easy because sometimes the enemy doesn't even hit you. Therefore, thorns won't activate. Therefore, you cannot slow as well as apply the bleed. And it's just much faster just to one shot everything because Sometimes the tornadoes will just venture off and they'll just one-shot stuff as well. So as far as the aspect goes, uh, we're running the Numbing Wrath over here. This is our source of getting extra fortification. However, you can run it in your Paragon board as well. It just allows you to not even like reach the node, so you can save out a bunch of skill points. But if you want to, you can throw that 
node in the Paragon board, then run something else here. And then uh, Juggernaut's Aspect, I really like this one, especially earlier on. However, in the next season, you can actually get a lot of strength. So if you want to drop Juggernauts, uh, if you reach the armor cap, which we don't know what it is right now, um, it used to be like 13,000 was like the number that you'd want to try to reach, 13,200, I believe it was. And uh, we don't have the official stats yet, but my guess is somewhere around 17 to to 20,000 is what you want for armor to do uh, beyond the level 154, which was kind of previously the highest amount that you need. And some of these bosses are quite difficult to actually defeat in the pit, and that's because they spawn in all these things that do an insane amount of damage here. But yeah, Juggernauts is excellent. And then if you want to run Edge Masters or any other aspect, or you can run Twin Strikes, that's totally fine too, because we usually will be at pretty much near maximum resource, so I thought Edge Masters is pretty consistent for this build, but this one can easily be swapped. Then I have Iron Blood over here, so this gives us extra damage reduction in big groups. This also just great just to have extra damage reduction. Uh, there's a lot of other brand new aspects that are going to be introduced. There's one that gives you dodge, and then when you dodge, you can heal, and Barbarian can easily get like 50 to 60k life, so this can actually help out a little bit. And then Aspect of Slaughter just to get extra form of mobility while you are basically in town or you're moving from pack to pack. There's a lot of different ones that you can run. I put some there in the notes as um, season four isn't out yet. I can't put all the correct gear stats because it doesn't technically exist here, but um, any other utility you can run the one where you can daze the enemy and you get more damage on daze. That's totally fine too. It's a new like utility one that will actually give you damage. Heck, you can run the Penitent Graves and just get more damage if you want. Uh, Windlasher over here, and whatever rolls like the higher roll, you can throw in the two-hander. But Windlasher is great because when you use dust, uh, double swing is going to create those dust devils, and you can get even more dust devils with a condition. And then Fierce Winds, this makes it so when you shout, you're going to get Dust Devils, and this makes them bigger and does more damage. This is the only form of increased size that I'm getting. You can temper on your weapons to get increased Dust Devil Chance, so you get basically double, and then you can also get the increased size. Increased size equals more damage, but again, it will make the game lag, so... Again, my guess is they will probably nerf it in some way, so that's why I'm not running it in the gameplay. And then for the other aspects, I'm going to go ahead and move it over here so we can still see some gameplay. Uh, so on the amulet, I'm running the devilish aspect over here, and you definitely want to try to get crit on amulet rings and your glove unless you're running twin strikes, which you can't just roll crit on them. So uh, devilish aspect just makes it so when you spend fury, you're going to be able to create dust devils, and they're going to get some more damage. And then if you want to, you can run Vocalized Empowerment. I like to run builds where I never have to worry about resource. So if you are reaching the resources, you can kind of swap things in and out. I just made it very beginner friendly. So if you roll like really garbage rolls on everything, you could still have infinite resource. So this makes it when you uh, shout, you're going to be able to have additional resources while they're active. You can rotate in between them if you want to, to kind of mid-max on this. Uh, and then there's the Bold Chieftains. By the way, this does not give you... Um, it says per second while active, not per shout. So if you activate like triple shouts, it's not like you can get like 30 regen per second. It's just one of them, but it doesn't matter. You'll have infinite resource pretty easy with this build. Bold Chieftains makes it so whenever you cast a shout, its cooldown is reduced. So ideally you do want to shout in groups, that way you can have extra cooldown. Uh, I don't even have any cooldown in this build, um, but... If you do get cooldown reduction, it will really help out with this build because obviously you can keep up your survivability and your shouts, which will make you go faster. So don't skip out on cooldown reduction. It's just the gameplay that you're seeing is PTR, so I didn't get everything absolutely perfect. And then we have accelerating aspects so we can get more attack speed and then limitless rage. So each point of fury that we generate is going to grant our next core skill extra damage. So just more damage overall. Or if you have to have grandfather throw that into, obviously. Um, so, uh, next other things that I want to go over, other notes uh, and whatnot, uh, let me go ahead and kind of make this a little bit smaller so we're not seeing so much of the text blocking the screen here. So, I'm, I wrote a bunch of notes, and I know it might be hard to read, but I'm just going to include the Mobilytics website so you guys can read all of this, but... Uh, this is going to be something that uh, if you do want to mid-max and you want to get those Ubers, I mentioned what other Uber uniques could be good. Uh, there's uh, extra notes in here, but ideally this is what you want to actually get on your affixes. So let's go ahead and actually zoom in on this because I feel like this is actually important. Oh, as far as the gems goes, emerald, rubies, as well as diamonds, pretty much. Uh, that's going to be one of the most important things. But over here, the things that I want to highlight here that I think that are actually important uh, for the affixes. So getting life, cooldown reduction, strength, 
length, all resistance or solo resistance being one each. You can temper that on as well. Fury per second is great. Get crit in your amulet as well as uh, in your gloves and rings, which I mentioned before. You can get also uh, damage to crowd control. That's totally fine. Um, normally, you would think that this is bad because, well, things aren't going to be crowd controlled. Uh, with this build because you might not see that there's a way to crowd control. It's actually in the skill tree. Uh, the reason why you can get damage with crowd controlled, ideally, I would just get flat damage. You can get damage to distance and close. It doesn't really matter. There's really no bad stat on the temper, but you can get damage to crowd control. I just wanted to mention this as a note. The best one is probably just straight up damage, but you can get damage to distance and close because, again, these tornadoes are just going to be going all around. If I was to say which one would be the best, though, probably close, but don't worry too much on wasting your tempers on that. Waste your tempers on getting the increased... Uh, dust devil size or the chance for those to proc you can also get resource cost reduction on your two-handed or get chance to get resource on lucky hit ideally this one would be arguably better uh, but getting some sort of uh, amount of resource cost reduction can be still helpful even though in theory you'd want to spend more resource to reach that 100 because every 100 you grant yourself those little tornadoes that come out the dust devils uh, but there comes to a point sometimes where uh, maybe you are out of resources and you don't want to be out of resources so getting the resource cost reduction can totally be a okay as well but now that we went over that let's go ahead and go over the skill tree so as far as the skill tree goes let me go ahead and make this a little uh slimmer so it doesn't block all of the screen here and we will go over the skill tree so as far as the skill tree goes you just need to put two points uh early on and then after you put your two points earlier on, you can go ahead and get, oh, it's, it looks like it just wants to recenter every single time that we move on this thing, because they're doing some updates here. So basically, you do want to go ahead and put your points into, in the very beginning, doesn't really matter, because you don't even use a skill. Then we get double swing, and then we're going to get the enhanced and the furious, and then we're going to get the uh, presence over here. Oh, it keeps on going back to the, the thing. I, I, like I said, I think they're doing some maintenance on the, the website because a lot of things have been changing because there is, of course, then you are update here. But uh, yeah, just getting... Oh, it doesn't even let me scroll. Does it let me scroll? All right. Well, basically, you want Rally and Cry. You want to go ahead and get Martial uh, Vigor if you can and then get Imposing Presence to get more HP. And then we'll have to scroll down. Oh, you know what? It just snaps right back to the top. Okay, I guess if I zoom out all the way. Okay, <laughs> this is what the skill tree looks like. All right, so I'll just kind of like briefly go over it, but just visit the website. It'll probably work much better by maybe tomorrow or something, but I guess they're still working on it. So just getting like one point into the shouts is kind of ideal what you're trying to go for. And just one point to Iron Skin or whatever skill that you want. You can run Leap, you can run... Um, the charge, uh, you can run whatever you want, and then we're running Rambling Cry. The only thing I'd like to get over here is the booming voice, so our shouts will last longer. And then I like to get increased movement speed, and then aggressive resistance, and you pretty much have this up most of the time, so damage while berserking. And then also uh, Fury Generation is great. No Mercy, I like this one, getting an extra crit strike chance. Again, you will uh, get that slow via your... Uh, activation of bleed and that is actually activated by your thorns if you happen to have it or you could just have your bleeding of flex uh, automatically activate if you are using the two-handed sword expertise you're just going to constantly bleed uh, now it only bleeds on healthy enemies but it doesn't really matter because most of the stuff just dies uh, before that even matters unless you're doing of course like a uber boss and then it might take some time and then uh, No Mercy and uh, Pit Fighter, like I mentioned before. And then Thick Skin, as well as Kleiner Offensive could be good. Defensive Stance could definitely be used as well. And then uh, Wrath the Berserker, we're putting all the points into that. And then Tempered Fury, so we get some extra uh, Fury. And then we are also running Unbridled Rage, because we do want to spend more resource. This one did receive a buff, though, Unconstrained. And uh, yeah, you can increase the stats on it but i would say this one is objectively better but if you are having resource problems like you don't have to have a lot of the good rolls like the plus fury to second again rolls on your chest as well as your helmet and boots uh, you can go ahead and swap this one out for unconstrained because this one is a little bit harder to run like asap as soon as you like start your build now, as far as the paragon board let's go ahead and go over that so the very first one we're going to be running exploit uh, on the first board and then we're going to be running this one that is optional so i made it again super beginner friendly this one is going to be on blood rage we're going to be getting wrath and this is going to give us skills that crit are going to be giving us fury and that's why we want to kind of focus in on crit and then this one is in pretty much every barbarian build because you want to be able to get grant yourself the berserking so you don't have to shout for it so you basically get to keep it up 100 of the time and then carnage is one of the best nodes in the entire game uh, because uh, while Berserking Crit Strikes are going to increase our attack speed. And on top of that, this is the best board for specifically uh, 
the glyph ire because our damage while uh, berserking is going to be increased and we need to get that multiplier on the damage while berserking and so this board is going to be the best for that and then for the fourth board we are going to be going into warbringer and territorial so uh we're going to be getting some damage reduction over here with territorial and then a pretty easy board uh decimator with twister the brand new dust devil build because we're going to deal more damage after creating a dust devil and then also this increases uh our damage with dust devils so that's going to be excellent for the build because that is the main source of damage so just a nice little uh, power on board there are a lot of points just as a heads up how i built it uh to specifically getting lots and lots of fury and the reason why i want to uh, have lots and lots of fury is just so we never really run out of resources and then while we're at maximum it kind of helps out with all of the different things that would spend fury so we can kind of upkeep and not worry too much about ever dipping down because when you're out of fury uh, well you're not going to be doing as much damage but that's pretty much it again there's going to be some uh, notes uh, if you want to go ahead and read them and we'll make a update to this build if there really needs to be any build but realistically this is probably what the build will be looking like once we actually get the season to come out but let me know guys if you've played the dust devil double swing barbarian and there will be another variant it's going to be very similar but if you are a fan of whirlwind whirlwind can actually be played next season but it's not whirlwind damage even though they also buff gore's grip it's still honestly pretty underwhelming so it's pretty much the same build and i'll be dropping a guide for it. there are a few changes though and i'm gonna make a dedicated video but if you are interested in that and you are new here and you want to see the other barbarian builds because i actually have all of the barbarian core skill builds for the season i got all the gameplay on the ptr so subscribe if you want to see some more barbarian as well as other diablo 4 builds and i'll catch you guys in the next one peace out